Look at what we've got here, guys. The open based secure distribution, my favorite based secure distribution, got a lovely little update. OpenBSD 7.2 just dropped the other day and it was accompanied by this lovely artwork made by John Chad. So let's take a look at John Chad's artwork. It looks like he drew our favorite based fishies in sort of a Dr. Seuss fashion. And you know, I really like this. This is probably gonna be my favorite release artwork since, I don't know, maybe version 6.9, because I really kind of like the yin yang thing that's going on here. And of course, you know, it's version 6.9. That just makes it that much better. Uh, so I think I like this one a little bit more and maybe this cyberpunk one uh, that we've got for version 6.8. Really like the aesthetic, really like the colors that are here, but I definitely put John Chad's uh, Dr. Seuss Fishies in my top five favorite OpenBSD release artworks, at least for the CD-ROM era, because let's be honest, the CD-ROM era, the, the post-CD-ROM era doesn't have anything on the CD-ROM era. But let's go ahead and take a look at what is new with this release. So right at the very beginning, they mention additional support for some different architectures. Now, most of this doesn't really apply to me because I'm only using OpenBSD, at least right now, on servers. More specifically, on the edge of my cloud infrastructure for things like reverse proxies uh, and my bastion host. That's what we're taking a look at right now. This runs OpenBSD. And I really recommend that everybody get a Bastion host, regardless of what you're running, even if you're just running some simple little blog site. Now, I know that this sounds fancy, right? Oh, Bastion host, that sounds like something that only enterprises should use, but no, it's not super fancy. It's basically just a server or a VPS in this case that is running VPN software, or hell, you could probably even do a Bastion host with an SSH tunnel, uh, but the idea is, this box has to be in the same VLAN or physical LAN as the services that you're trying to secure, you know, the main services that you're gonna to serve to your customers. So put your Bastion host in the same VLAN as your main service, which Volter can actually do for you automatically. And my Volter referral link is in the description if you're looking for hosting, by the way. Then from there, you just go and update the configs on all your other servers to only accept connections to things like SSH, cPanels, or whatever from your Bastion host over the VLAN. So that way, none of those access points, none of those things that only you should access but you don't want your customers going into, uh, or things that hackers are commonly going to try to brute force, things like SSH, those are never even gonna be facing the internet. They're only gonna be accessible over your LAN. So then, if a hacker wants to try to attack your web service, instead of him directly attacking a Linux server that might be running a complex software stack and have a relatively large attack surface, they have to first go through this OpenBSD box that's pretty much just running WireGuard and OpenSSH. So this is much harder to hack. Uh, or hell, you could even host the website or the service that you're gonna be serving to your customers on an OpenBSD box. Um, pretty much all the same software that you'd use in Linux for web servers, things like Python, PHP, JavaScript, Node, different SQL databases, Nginx, HTTPD, all of that is also available on OpenBSD. Um, and you don't even have to get into ports, it's available through the package manager. So development and deployment for most stacks should be the same uh, on BSD as it is on Linux. Plus, I generally find my OpenBSD boxes are a lot less resource intensive compared to the Linux ones. Like, okay, for example, if we take a look at um, this Debian box here. So this is also another Bastion host. It's pretty much just running OpenSSH and uh, WireGuard, but it's still idling at 103 megabytes, uh, using 103 megabytes of RAM, while the uh, OpenBSD one, it's only using 16. 
So yeah, I'm a big fan of using the base puffer fish to, I guess, protect my bloated penguins that are huddled together inside of my VPC. Uh, but there are some people that use OpenBSD on the desktop. So why not extend support to those desktop platforms? Like, um, well, actually, <laughs> Now that I read this a little bit closer, I think the Ampere Ultra is actually a server platform, uh, but the Apple M2, okay, obviously that isn't, that's the architecture of the heckin' Apple MacBooks that everybody likes. Um, and I actually do think that this might be the best laptop hardware out there, at least as far as uh, the CPUs go. I might be wrong about that because I haven't really uh, researched a lot and looked up benchmarks of like the M2 versus current processors. But I know that when the M1 came out, they, it was blowing the competition out of the water in terms of power efficiency. Uh, so yeah, this release adds support for those machines and it's also adding support uh, for Lenovo ThinkPads and other machines that are using Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 processors. Oh, and also speaking of these different architectures that OpenBSD supports, let me share something that I learned about OpenBSD with you guys. So apparently part of the reason that OpenBSD goes through all this effort to support all these different architectures and really obscure architectures to begin with is that it helps them with finding really obscure, really hard to find bugs. Uh, like one of the kernel improvements that was mentioned in here, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right here. So they say that they fixed Luna 88K multiprocessor kernels booting with CPU modules installed in arbitrary slots. Now, I didn't even know what the hell a Luna 88K was when I first read this. So I looked it up and apparently it's a workstation from the early 90s uh, that when it came out, it only had, uh, let me see. Yeah, so the first uh, 88K based Luna workstation, it came with one to four 25 megahertz processors and 16 to 64 megabytes of RAM, depending on the model that you were getting. Uh, so yeah, this workstation is old as the hills. It's actually older than me, and it's still getting support uh, from OpenBSD. So yeah, this really obscure bug fixing on these obscure platforms benefits the whole OpenBSD community and it especially benefits the people like me who are essentially using OpenBSD as a security appliance at the edge of their cloud. Uh, now another thing I like about OpenBSD and it's part of the reason why I feel it's very secure is that the dev team is constantly going over the code for their kernel and their core utilities. Um, like if we kind of go through some of the kernel improvements that are mentioned here, so there's fixes for PF, it looks like. Um, looks like there's fixes for RW lock. And let's see, there's a fix for disk label or some improvements that are being made to it. So this shows that they're regularly looking over the code to these different parts of the kernel. Uh, and then if we come down to, uh, let's see, yeah, the bug fixes and the tweaks in user land, okay? So there's fixes or there's changes to uh, PKG add, right? Package add, several of them. That is the package manager that everybody is using in OpenBSD. Uh, and then there's all sorts of changes to FDisk that are listed here. So if you ever do disk partitioning in OpenBSD, then you're gonna be using that. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Xterm, some of you BSD folks are using that, probably the desktop BSD people. Uh, let's see, grep, gzip, uh, what else, cron. It looks like Auk had multiple memory leaks fixed. That actually sounds like it might have been a little bit of a big deal. Um, what else do we have? They sped up word counts, word counting. Hey, the one thing that that application is supposed to do, now it does it a little bit faster. Isn't that great? In fact, I'm so excited, I think I'm going to stop reading through all of these and I'm just gonna go ahead and update my heckin' Bastion host because see, it's running OpenBSD 7.1 and I want the latest and greatest.
So I'm gonna go ahead and do as sys upgrade and put in my user's password. And I'll go ahead and speed this part up for you guys because after all, it does have minimal resources. Might take a little while to install this. Okay, so I just SSH'd back into my Bastion host and bam, we are now running the latest OpenBSD. And it only took about five, maybe six minutes for the full uh, upgrade process to happen. When you do that sys upgrade, uh, what it does is it runs, uh, well, of course, sys upgrade. You saw it download all the packages, uh, then it installs it. Of course, it kicks you out of the SSH connection when it reboots. Uh, and then it runs sysmerge, and I think I still have to run do as pkg add u to remove um, any old packages. And uh, yeah, so that just removes all the old packages and basically just cleaning up from the upgrade. Uh, but yeah, really painless process to do. So go ahead and update your OpenBSD boxes today.